Will your engine not start? Will it run for a while and then not restart? If so, you might need a new ignition coil. The ignition coil works with the flywheel to produce the electrical current needed for combustion. The flywheel has a couple of magnets mounted on it at specific locations. As the magnets pass by the ignition coil, they induce an electric current within the ignition coil's windings. This current is sent to the spark plug at the precise time it is needed to ignite the air-fuel mixture inside the cylinder. There are several symptoms of a bad ignition coil. Sometimes it'll start and run, but then suddenly turn off. Other times the engine starts and runs, but then won't restart until it is cooled off. Replacing the ignition coil is a repair that you can do yourself, and I'm going to show you how. I'll begin by removing the top cover. Next, I'll remove the starter assembly. Now I'll remove the ignition wire from the spark plug and one of the kill wires from the ignition coil. There's a metal clip that secures the ignition wires to the side of the saw and I'll go ahead and remove that. Now I'll remove the ignition module from the saw. It's held in place with a couple of screws. I'll slide the ignition wire forward to get access to the front screw. You'll also notice that the grounding wire is attached with that screw as well. Now I can install the new ignition coil. As I install the new ignition coil, I need to take the wires from the wiring harness and put them up in this little recess near the brake handle. Then as I install the ignition coil, I'll bring the wire around and put them on top of the wires on the wiring harness. That'll keep all the wires out of the way so they don't get pinched by the various parts of the saw. Now I'll secure the ignition coil to the saw, but there needs to be a specific gap between the magnets on the flywheel and the feet on the coil. In this case, it needs to be 14 thousandths of an inch. I have a special gauge that's made just for doing this, but you could also use a business card or two as long as the gap is about 14 thousandths or 0.35 of a millimeter. So I'll insert the gap down in front of the feet on the ignition coil, and then I'll rotate the magnets on the flywheel around until they line up with the feet on the ignition coil. Now the gap's correct, and I can secure the coil. First, I'll put in this front screw on the ignition coil, and that's the one that also secures the ground wire. I'll put the screw through the eyelet on the ground wire, and then into the saw. As I tighten the screws, I'll just be mindful of that gap on the coil, make sure it's correct. And now I'll secure the last wire from the wiring harness to the tab on the ignition coil. And I can remove the spacer between the ignition coil and the flywheel. Now I'll pull the wires from the wiring harness towards the rear of the saw so any excess wire is at the back. Same thing with the spark plug wire. I want to line up this piece of heat shielding so that it's in front of the cylinder. Then I'll place the ignition wire, or the spark plug wire, in front of that and secure the wire bundle with the metal clip that we removed earlier. Now I'll reinstall the starter assembly. and I'll place the spark plug boot back onto the spark plug. And now I can replace the saw's top cover.